Hello ghosts and ghouls, happy Halloween! I can already feel all of the spooks and horror flowing through my veins. This time of year is my favourite, even though Australians don't celebrate Halloween because we're a shit country. Land down under? More like, let me down under. Not my best, but hey, I tried, and that's what matters. That's it, my final words! I thought, to get into the Halloween spirit, I'd talk about my favourite horror gaming franchise. The guts of people and the guts of animals. Before the kids go out trick-or-treating, it's a good idea to check out the sex offender registry list in your neighbourhood. Silent Hill. Instead of covering the original four games like every other YouTuber has already extensively talked about, I want to discuss Silent Hill Homecoming. You see, the game we got in the end was something very different to the game originally being worked on by American studio Double Helix. In fact, some of the original ideas being thrown around in the offices of Double Helix and Konami were some of the most batshit insane things I have ever heard of. So today, I'm sharing that insanity with you and I'm discussing the crazy origins of Silent Hill Homecoming. Silent Hill Homecoming was the second Silent Hill game developed by a Western studio, the first being Silent Hill Origins, released by Climax Studios in 2007. But Silent Hill Homecoming was the first numbered entry created without Team Silent at the helm. It started development not as Homecoming, but as Silent Hill 5. It was announced by ex-chief designer Masashi Tsuboyama during an interview with Eurogamer in 2004. Konami released a teaser video for Silent Hill 5 at E3 2007, but it was later renamed to Silent Hill Homecoming. The game was released on PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and PC on September 30, 2008 in North America, November 6 on Steam, and February 27, 2009 in Europe. It was banned in Australia due to violent content that the Australian Classification Board didn't like, so a censored version was released in February 2009. More like, land let me down, under. Silent Hill Homecoming was never released in Japan, making it the first Silent Hill game not to be released in the franchise's country of origin. Konami said it was due to assorted issues, which is hella vague, but I think it's because the game wasn't received well, so they just didn't bother. Silent Hill Homecoming follows Alex Shepard, a soldier who was discharged from the military and sent to hospital after being injured in combat. Following his release from hospital, Alex heads back to his hometown, Shepard's Glen. But when he gets home, he notices that the town seems different, for the worse. People have gone missing, the stores are closed and hardly anyone seems to be around. When he makes it to his childhood home, he finds his mother in a depressive, near catatonic state. She tells him that his father, who always treated Alex like shit, and his younger brother Joshua have disappeared. He decides to search the town for his brother, but hey, if his dad has disappeared, man, that's just a shame. As he searches the foggy streets of Silent Hill, I mean, Shepherd's Glen, he uncovers the cause of the strange events occurring in the town and its connection to the neighbouring town of Silent Hill. So that's the plot outline for the game we got, but I'm going to tell you that originally, the story of Silent Hill 5 was going to feature some batshit insane moments and would try to force so much nostalgia into your body that you'd explode into millions of little Silent Hill pieces. I'm going to reveal the crazy origins of Silent Hill Homecoming and how, if one Tom Hewlett didn't call out all the bullshit, this game could have been so much worse. Or better, depending on your desire for awful stories. Strap in and strap on, you're in for a wild ride. The first source of these shenanigans is an interview of Tom on the Voices in the Static podcast on March 6, 2012. It's hosted by Whitney of the Silent Hill Historical Society and YouTube channel Whitney Plays, and CJ, the editor of Horror Games' new site Rely on Horror, who I used to work for as a content writer. The second source is an AMA with Tom on Reddit, which was published onto the Silent Hill Memories website. Links to both sources, Whitney's awesome Let's Play channel, and the Rely on Horror website will be listed in the description, so you can check out all that stuff if you want to. And honestly, between just you and me, I think you should. 
First, I want to dive into the history of Tom's involvement during the development of Homecoming. Tom became part of the Silent Hill Homecoming team, technically, as an associate producer about halfway through the game's production. Tom said he was given a plot synopsis of the game at the time and was asked to give feedback. He reacted poorly to the script he was given. One of my biggest uh, contributions, I guess, was I went through and made sure that uh, things fit into canon. I know some fans would argue that, but uh, they didn't see the first draft that I saw, so you have to take my word for it. And that first draft Tom was talking about would have been a shit show. Originally, the producer of that game intended it to be the first in a trilogy. Wait, what? Yeah, so wow. we could have had three games with Alex Shepard, and you know, Heather would come back to Silent Hill and join up with him and such. Tom said the original plot would have got nearly all of the gang from previous Silent Hills together. Henry Townsend from Silent Hill 4 The Room, Heather from Silent Hill 3, and Alex would have all work together to get to the bottom of the evil in Silent Hill. Never not once have I ever thought that bringing back previous protagonists in new Silent Hill games is a good idea, and the fact that at one stage, Silent Hill Homecoming was going to do just that is so, so stupid. Tom said the cameos from previous Silent Hill characters wouldn't stop there. In the podcast, co-host CJ mentions that Tom posted on the Silent Hill forum concerning the character of Elle Holloway, a friend of Alex's from high school, and Laura, the young girl James meets in Silent Hill 2. I'm not gonna lie, this is about to get extra stupid. Elle was supposed to be Laura, cause see, her name's Elle. And um, you're supposed to realize it when you're on the boat with her and she puts on James's jacket. Oh man, where'd she get that jacket? It's James's. That's Laura. But she didn't have a, a mom. <clears throat> she was an orphan. Right, which is what I pointed out. Uh, mm. Did they know that she was an orphan or did they just assume that James died and she... Uh... I think I think there's some line in somewhere. Maybe it's Lost Memories. I don't remember. It says something about, you know, she came to Silent Hill and no one knows where she's from or something. It's just some weird vague line. So I think they saw that and sort of were like, here's where she came from across the lake in Shepherd's Glen, which, you know, it makes sense until you realize she's an orphan and doesn't have a mom and that's why she likes Mary and that's the whole point of her character. Yeah, I'm just gonna let you sit in that for a little bit. You good? Okay. It really seems like the writers and Konami were so desperate to incorporate as much as they could from previous games into Homecoming, without thinking about whether or not it would tie into existing canon, or if including previous characters was even the right thing to do. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could that they didn't start to think if they should. Sure, Silent Hill often calls back to other titles, but through more subtle means such as notes, posters, or Robbie the Rabbit. But there's always been restraint when it comes to the characters appearing in other games. Anyway, let's keep going because unfortunately, I'm only getting started. What in cousin fucking tarnation, Alabama Betty Crocker, Miss fucking Betty White shit is this? Pyramid Head is in Silent Hill Homecoming. He makes his presence known during the introductory level in Alcamilla Hospital. Alex then runs into Pyramid Head inside the Grand Hotel in Silent Hill. Lastly, Pyramid Head appears near the end of the game and is tied directly to one of the game's numerous endings. Fans have always criticised his inclusion in Homecoming because, basically, he shouldn't be there. He is intrinsically tied to James Sunderland from Silent Hill 2, and since James isn't in Homecoming, Pyramid Head shouldn't be either. But I did find this amazing leap of logic from somebody on GameFAQs, trying to explain why Pyramid Head is in Homecoming. That reminds me, uh, is this also why Alex's last name was Shepard? Was that going to be another tie to Mary? No, that's a coincidence. And I gotta say, bravo for trying. I don't even know where to start with that, or if I would ever finish once I did, so let's just move on and never speak of this again. Pyramid Head being in Silent Hill Homecoming once is too many times. But Tom said one of his biggest problems was that Pyramid Head was going to play an even more prominent role in the game. You know, originally he was all over and, he, and there were a bunch of sequences with him and it was really cool. It was just sort of like, why Pyramid Head? you know, why not someone else? And then- so Was he just popping up everywhere, just saying hey to Alex, or did Alex actually fight him? He chased you through the graveyard, and there was a lot more in the hotel, where his first appearance in the final game, you know, there's a whole sequence in there with him. So there were a lot of se really cool sequences with him, but some technical problems came up and, and they couldn't make it in the final game. Tom said he made a big stink about Pyramid Head being included in Silent Hill Homecoming, and that one of the first big meetings he had with Konami and the developers was him trying to get rid of Pyramid Head. After this meeting and after he made some further edits, Tom was taken off Homecoming by Konami and put to work on Silent Hill Origins and Contra 4. Tom was eventually brought back to Silent Hill Homecoming after the previous producer left the team. He claims that once he came back, 
the story had been stitched together in an attempt to make something cohesive. In the end, Pyramid Head was in the game, but thankfully, heavily scaled back. But even the small cameo created problems. So then we had a tough situation because now he showed up, but there wasn't really a compelling reason for him to show up. Whereas originally it was like, shut up, Tom, it's cool. Now it was just kind of like, shut up, Tom, oh. he shows up. So, you know, I worked with the designer, Jason, to uh, come up with the, the bogeyman stuff. Oh, and sort the, of the try to explain, stuff? you know, why Alex would have imagined this figure. And I kind of see him like, you know, Fitch's daughter makes Scarlet. And so like that creature sort of came from her. And then, uh, you know, Asphyxia comes from... Uh, Nora. So, you know, I kind of saw the, the boogeyman as like, Alex is that in the end product. Everyone, all those creatures killed the parents, and then, you know, we tried to make it fit in. They weren't trying to just blindly create a Silent Hill game. I know people assume that they didn't care, but they really did, and they were given maybe not the best direction at first. I've saved the best and dumbest thing until last. Silent Hill is known for its fantastic endings. Personally, I don't think there is a single Silent Hill game in the original series that doesn't have a powerful ending. They were never bombastic or over the top, and yet ended in a way that really hit the player hard, and made them feel so many emotions that lingered with them long after the credits rolled. The original producer of Homecoming was going to continue this trend, just in the absolute wrong way. The big end scene that they were planning was sort of this, you know, big showdown between Josh, who represented water, and Alessa, who represented fire. And they'd sort of have a Super Saiyan battle over Toluca Lake. <laughs> Wow. What? And then one day, um, I said, you know, the Alessa storyline was kind of tied up in Silent Hill 3. Yeah. Um... Like, there's not really an Alessa spirit <laughs> floating around anymore. You know, if you want to do something cool with Josh, by all means, but Alessa's kind of done. Wait, why were, they, why were they fighting? For control of the town. See? Why? What? I, I couldn't Ooh. tell you. <laughs> um... So, so things like that, I tried my best to get rid of. Well, thank you for stopping it from being a trilogy and having some Super Saiyan battle at the end. <laughs> if you had Dragon Ball Z-like ending on your Silent Hill bingo card, you win. And also, you need serious help. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. But all of the nonsense I just went through wasn't because the people behind the game were lazy. In fact, it was the complete opposite. But uh, I just, you know, I don't want people to take away like, Double Helix is dumb and they don't get it. Everyone everyone there wanted to make a good Silent Hill game. It's not like anybody was phoning it in or just didn't think Silent Hill was important. Tom said earlier when discussing the inclusion of Pyramid Head that the team didn't have the best direction while working on the game. They truly wanted to make something that fans of the series would love, and whether or not you believe they managed to achieve that is your opinion. I honestly think that Silent Hill Homecoming is severely underrated, and believe the team truly put their heart and soul into the game, but they just needed more guidance. And with that, we've come to the end of my video about the crazy origins of Silent Hill Homecoming. Thank you for watching as always. I've been going through a lot lately, and if you follow me on Twitter, you know what I'm talking about. But I feel so happy and humbled when you guys watch and enjoy my videos. I love talking about horror with you guys. It is one of my favorite things in this world, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart to allow me to do that. If you want to continue the horror convo, you can join my Discord, and if you want to support the channel, you can head over to my Patreon, both of which will be linked in the description. Description. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see all you spooky people in the next video. Bye bye. Oh, no.